All right, I just want to talk about UK immigration authorities separating children from parents permanently, um, along with the other information. The reason I've mentioned permanently, you may be surprised at some of the stuff that I'll bring up today. This information comes from Bail for Immigration Detainees, BID. BID is the name of the charity organization. The British age government is separating children from parents who have been taken into immigration detention, the practice that brought worldwide condemnation relating to Trump. Now, we'll also say the Obama administration also did the same anyway, so it seems to be quite normal. Although, normally, it's normal in process, but may actually be quite a bad, well, it's a bad thing to do in some of these cases because it has long-term effects on the children. Scores of children and possibly hundreds are separated from a parent or carer in the UK every year according to a charity that challenges immigration detention. You've got to bear in mind that some of the males could be detained and they deem that the woman is unfit, his wife or whatever, because she has no income or whatever because they're relying on the detainee being uh, capable of uh, funding um, the life of the woman and the children. So, father's in jail, children go and go in care. That's the UK. Um, Bail for immigration detainees has so far this year represented 155 parents who have been separated from children or children while in immigration detention in the UK. The charity usually handles up to 170 cases a year. I would stress that I think this number is going to increase over time purely because of our lovely stance on immigration within the United Kingdom. While currently Home Office guidelines say that children should not be separated from a parent if the results of the child being taken into care, Bid says this happened to three families in the last 16 months. Now, one of the things I want to stress on that is somebody can be a drug addict in the UK and they will still try and encourage the child to be with the parent in many ways, even though that person is a high risk. So I do find some of this very peculiar. In two cases, fathers were taken into immigration detention after local authorities warned that the children's mothers were unable to care for them alone and that the children would need to spend their childhood in care, both when men were eventually bailed. So the point is they were out on bail, they were then able to carry on a normal life and some of these are resulting in um, some issues that can be res resolved quite easily. Is maybe they were ever staying and there is reasons behind that the court case against them would collapse anyway but at the same time they're punishing the, the entire family for something one member has done. Um, in a study published in 2013, BID studied a sample of 111 parents who had been separated from 200 children over a three year period. The average period of detention had been 270 days. Almost half the children, 200 children were placed in foster or local authority care during these parents' detention. In 92 cases, the parents were eventually released in 15 cases, however, the parent was deported and removed from the UK without their children. Uh, in a follow-up research in 2014, BID studied a sample of 47 immigration detainees and found that 11 were removed or deported without their children. BID says that in most cases, it handles the children. Second parent is not the in immigration detention. It has represented single parents who have been in detention facing deportation. However, in cases where both parents have been separated from their children and detained pending deportation. Celia Clark, director of BID, says, What has been happening in the United States with families arriving at the border being forcibly separated is utterly re reprehensible. Uh, but in the UK, we do not have the moral high ground. Our government has been separating parents from their children for the purpose of immigration control for years. Parents are detained with no time li limit on that detention and no automatic legal representation leaving their children in the community. Now this is also very similar to people that are going for deportation that have committed offences in the UK. Now the problem you get with these detention centres and the, there was a former head, I can't remember the, back in the 90s, he actually said the process could actually be done in a week and yet some of these people are still waiting a couple of years to be deported. The problem is they are not in a rush to deport them. These are like um, prisons, but at the same time, 
the deportation could be done in a week, could be speeded up, but instead they're dealing with other embassies and other issues which drag the whole process out, which could be accelerated. And as I said, the head of this um, back in the 90s, I'll see if I can find his information again because I, I remember watching this around G4S, um, th he actually said they could have sped it up back then. And the point is, today, still people are being stuck in detention centres for years. Um, now, not being funny, if you went to jail, you have a fixed period. Say, for example, you commit a crime, you go to court, say it's six months, bang, you've got a date and start chalking it on the wall. Detention centres, there's no end date. It's not, there's nothing in stone. There's no guarantee what's happening. Even if you are supposed to be deported 100%, there's no guarantee of when that's actually going to occur. So just wanted to stress that out in case people have never come across this before. The, the impact and devastation in long is long lasting on children or parents. We have supported, uh, regressed development, behavioral difficulties and suffered from night terrors. The enduring legacy was a constant fear that their parents or parents might be taken from them again. This appears to be limited awareness even within the government of the ex the extent of which the government's hostile environment strategy for migrants has resulted in children being separated from a parent. James Cleverly, the MP, the Deputy Chair of the Conservative Party, representing the government in a Radio 5 uh, live discussion in June, said, We don't do this in the UK. We have a very family focused detention regime. I've got to admit, I do get frustrated by these puppet muppets because the, the problem is they are so out of touch with reality they would have no idea. They wouldn't even know where to look and they've never bothered that asking. At the end of the day they would not want to lift that rug and see what's under there, in my personal opinion. Now a lot of these people that are having this happen have not done anything major and sometimes it is related to paperwork processes and a couple of case, cases here I'll just add so we can finish up and wrap this up. A was detained for every stay in his visa. His son, a British citizen, was born while he was detained and taken into care of the local authority due to his mother's inability to care without support. She suffered from depression, had a history of self-harming before the birth. The local authority had warned the Home Office that the baby would need to be taken into care and there's the AA be released from detention without delay. During subsequent court hearings, the Home Office argued that because AA had been de in detention when boy, the boy was born, he had no meaningful involvement with the child's life and so there was no legal barrier to his removal. According to Bid, the Home Office also said it considered it reasonable and proportionate for the child to be separated from his father and spend his childhood in care. Bear in mind, Care should be a last resort thing for children. I don't care what a lot of people say, but the child abuse and other stuff that goes in in these care environments is an, one of the reasons it should be a last resort. But also, all the foundations that are there relate to a family environment are missing because you have no parent, you have no mentoring, you have no guidance. You are basically just living in a detention like your parent in many ways. Um, now, a stay on AA's removal from the country was eventually granted and he was released. After nine months in detention, the local authorities said it was more than happy for the child to live with his mother. That's nice of them. As long as AA was also there to support the mother. Now, a minute ago, they, they were actually saying that they don't really see the point of the father being there and just wash him aside. But they finish off with, oh, well... It can the child can go back to the mother because the father is back and now we recognize the father. The reason I'm going to be posting more of these videos is quite simply I think people need to be more aware of what's really going on in the political system in the UK. I'm also starting another channel on uh, something else as well because some of this stuff may actually not be good for my YouTube channel. It's definitely something that, even though it's factual, I uh, may not like for advertising side. So I may actually move a lot of this stuff over to a new channel. Um, purely because it's topics I'm interested in, it's topics I have a keen interest in. And also I do think it's important that people understand that we're being lied to a lot of the time. We are not getting the right information. We're getting told about the Kardashians and things. We're not getting 
told about the stuff that goes on in our political systems and in our immigration and everything else, we're getting told, you go and enjoy your British, Britain's Got Talent. Leave this to us, we, we're in charge here. Um, so thanks for watching and I just wanted to put that out there.